Eagles going to the finals for the sixth time in the last eight years. Up in the air, and the Boston Celtics will go to the NBA Finals. This is going to be good. I am incredibly happy with this year's NBA Finals matchup because there probably won't be a better matchup between two opposing NBA teams than the Golden State Warriors versus the Boston Celtics. There are so many X's and O's going into this chess match between two of the league's best defenses that I felt like it would be important to compile all of the information into one video so you guys can bear in mind as you watch game one on Thursday. So before we get to the content, we're making a huge push on my TikTok. It's at the flight my on TikTok, and here and there you might see us experimenting with shorts on this channel. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? I don't understand what this narrative was. When two years ago we were getting these narratives that the Golden State Warriors made an absolute gigantic mistake by pursuing Andrew Wiggins. As a matter of fact, we had Nick Wright famously saying that Andrew Wiggins is a bad basketball player. He's owed 95 million over the next three years and it starts next year. It's unspeakable the Golden State Warriors did this. It's over for them now. We will never see Steph in another NBA Finals again, ever. You know, luckily for me, I was doing NBA YouTube at the time, so I could actually post my take on the matter at the end screen, and whether it's good or bad, I'll let you guys decide it, but I recall it being something along the lines of D'Angelo Russell didn't fit within the backcourt of the Golden State Warriors with Steph Curry, and once Klay Thompson comes back, it's going to be even more complicated for the Golden State Warriors. So my assumption was, let's trade for Andrew Wiggins. This guy was selected with the number one overall pick in the 2014 NBA draft for a reason. I don't know if you guys remember at the time, but people were hyping up Andrew Wiggins in a very Zion Williamson-esque type of way. The one issue with his game was the fact that he was incredibly passive. I had tremendous optimism that the Golden State Warriors, who historically have been pretty damn good when it comes to player development, I mean, look no further than Jordan Poole, to make Andrew Wiggins not necessarily into an all-star, because that, in my mind, was a huge bonus, and I was really happy that he was able to fulfill that part of his potential, but to a point where he was an incredibly productive player contributing to a potential championship team. And they did that at the very minimum by boosting his three point percentage from 33% in his final season with the Minnesota Timberwolves to 39% with the Golden State Warriors. Now, part of that might have to do with the fact that he's sharing the floor with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, who's a remarkable playmaker, and they have a very deep bench as well. And Jordan Poole lately, has entered the conversation, which was something else that I also was predicting. So needless to say, obviously we're playing Captain Hindsight at a specific point. There's no question in my mind that this trade was an absolute home run. It didn't replace Kevin Durant's production, but it made it so that the Golden State Warriors could still be a highly productive team moving forward with at minimum an above average player at that position. I'll tell you what's even funnier about this. At the time, Andrew Wiggins was given a five-year $147 million max contract contract at the end of the 2018 to 2019 season because the Minnesota Timberwolves thought that, okay, within the next couple of years, he'll fulfill his potential. He's finally fulfilled his potential. And once again, his contract is about to expire by the end of next year. Regardless, I'm really happy for Andrew because he's going to be a huge difference maker for the Golden State Warriors in this series. He's most probably going to be tasked with guarding Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. And in this situation, at least what you were hoping to do to the Boston Celtics defensively is to somewhat but slow down Jason Tatum. Maybe get him to a point where he has one of those off nights for himself. Because the biggest issue that the Golden State Warriors are going to have potentially is going to come to the offensive side of the floor. Now, you might be wondering how this could be the case. The team that has given the Golden State Warriors the most problems in this past year's playoffs is none other than the Memphis Grizzlies. The reason being that if you want to play versus the Golden State Warriors, you can't have a Rudy Gobert traditional type center protecting the rim. You want to 
player that has a decent amount of versatility as well. And in the Memphis Grizzlies case, they did have such a player in Jaron Jackson Jr. He was able to block 15 shots in six games. And that's what goes on the stat sheet. There's no statistic for how many jump shots were altered as a result of his presence. Now, as a result of this, Jordan Poole had some trouble finishing at the basket, which is a huge part of the Golden State Warriors offense. Just to simplify things as much as possible, because I want this content to be as easily digestible for you guys as humanly possible. The Golden State Warriors offense is predicated on screens, getting their jump shooters open. And once you're fixated on ensuring that you don't allow a three point jumper to go in, obviously the backdoor cut. Now take a look at what happened the last time these two faced off against each other in the middle of the regular season. Jordan Poole tries to drive it in on Jason Tatum. He gets a great opportunity on a backdoor cut here and it gets altered by Robert Williams. This has been a theme throughout the entire game. Robert Williams was there every single time Jordan Poole was trying to get to the basket, which is why in my opinion, the most important player on the Boston Celtics, yes, obviously Jason Tatum and his ability to take over games. Yes, obviously Jalen Brown and the versatility that he brings. And of course, Marcus Smart and what he brings to the table defensively. But Robert Williams is that type of player that could literally be the difference between winning a championship in this instance, or unfortunately losing to the Golden State Warriors. And the number one question that we need solved is how the Golden State Warriors will potentially generate offense versus this Boston Celtics defense. It's pretty much a tug of war between these two teams because obviously the Golden State Warriors have a tremendous defense as well. It's just not even close to how good the Boston Celtics have been defensively this past year. And bear in mind, the Golden State Warriors are still one of the top defenses in the entire NBA. It's just the Boston Celtics are that freaking good defensively. It's just gonna be very interesting to just see the chess match between both of these teams because when the Golden State Warriors try to bring out their all small ball lineup with Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Steph Curry, and Klay Thompson, the Boston Celtics actually have an answer to that with Grant Williams running the small ball center alongside Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. And maybe you could throw in Derek White and take one of those players out. At the end of the day, I would expect a heavily defensive matchup between these two teams. And I think the one feature for the Boston Celtics that could completely crack this entire series open is if they turn over the ball excessively. Now I'm bringing this up because the Boston Celtics are 13th in the NBA, at least in terms of the regular season in turnover percentage, whereas the Golden State Warriors were 29th in the NBA in turnover percentage. Needless to say, this is going to be an incredible defensive matchup and either of these sides winning won't surprise me at all. Now, obviously I am a Los Angeles Laker fan, so I do kind of have a horse in this race, but at the end, I do think the Golden State Warriors experience and offensive scheme will eventually prevail against the Boston Celtics defense, especially when you consider all the things that need to go right for the Boston Celtics to win this. One, Robert Williams needs to be there every single game. Ime Udoka's game plan for the Golden State Warriors is going to have to be top tier. The Celtics need to make sure there aren't those games where Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, and Klay Thompson are making it rain from three, because once the Golden State Warriors get hot, they could shoot their opponent at the gym. There's just so many things that need to go right for the Boston Celtics to win, which is why I have the Golden State Warriors winning this series in six games. Now, I don't think it's going to be a situation where the Boston Celtics are guaranteed going to lose and it's going to end horribly for them because if things go the right way for the Boston Celtics, then we could easily see them win as well. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about all this? Who do you think is the most likely to win between the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors? Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.